time they've all been running today at the same time. And then it dies. Alright, well guys, I just got back from Maker Faire. And now I have to unpack all this stuff. But actually, I was going to have to wait because I have a test. So I have to study for that. And uh, yeah, it's a Calc 2 test. So that's not fun. So whoop de doo hurrah. So I'm going to have to study for that. So all this stuff is going to have to wait to be unpacked. I feel like I literally brought, like, my whole workshop to Maker Fair. I mean, I have, like, I have a lot of boxes of stuff here. I mean, I've got tools, and I mean, I've... And I'm really glad I brought all my tool, a lot of my tools, too, because I actually had to make some repairs on my Sterling engine today and my steam engine, too. So, well, not my steam engine, my boiler. So I had some uh, failures that were kind of interesting. So basically, yeah, so... Um, but yeah, I've got all this stuff to unpack, but I'll do that another time, I guess. So basically, my Sterling engine, when I got it it's all set up this morning, I went to fire it up, and basically, the displacer filled up with water. So, the displacer chamber. So, I, I was like, why is it not filling, like, why? I was trying to feed water into it, to into the water jacket, and it just kept taking more water, and taking more water. And then I tried moving the displacer rod up and down, and it like floated, and I was like, what is going on here? And uh, so I had the burner underneath, and I, I started hearing boil, boiling, and steam started coming out, and I was like, oh shoot, there's water in it. I was like, okay, I must have not put the gasket on right or something. So, because there's a gasket in between the two metal plates here where I can take it apart. So I was like, okay, I must have not put the gasket on right. It must be on crooked or there's a wrinkle in it. Um, so that's what I originally thought, but it wasn't that simple. I took it apart and I was like, I don't see anything wrong with it. The gasket was on there just fine. And then I realized that there was a little rust hole down, down right about, right about here. And it had rusted through. So basically yesterday when I took it apart, um, to, I must have accidentally like banged up against the side or something and when I was, probably when I was actually cleaning it out because it was kind of, there was a lot of crud in there. Well, not that much crud, just a little bit of rust flakes and stuff. So I was cleaning it out yesterday. I must have accidentally poked a hole. It was really thin. So I think when I turn it off, there's, when I stop using, there's a little bit of water that stays in the bottom here and rusts through the steel cans and it had rusted so thin that when I was cleaning it, I must have poked a hole in it. And um, so when I tried to fill it up with water, it leaked all in there. So so I patched, so luckily I had some files. So I, and uh, so I basically scratched the area around there and made sure it was all clean. And then I used a soldering iron and my blowtorch. Luckily I brought solder and flux. And so I used those to uh, patch the hole up and um, and that fixed it. And then I used, because it was like a lump there where the solder was then, so I had to use my little files I brought. Luckily, I brought them. And I was able to file the solder off and get it smooth enough where I could uh, run it again. And it ran great after that. The, basically, so the first like hour, um, well, actually, because I got there really early today, because um, I went to church first at like 6.30 a.m. mass. But, uh, so that was a, I woke up pretty early this morning, really tired. Um, so... I got there pretty early, so I was running that, I was making sure everything was working before everybody got there at 10, and, um, so, yeah, so I had, I had, I was working on it before everybody got there, and it probably was out of commission for like an hour or two, but, uh, after that, he ran the rest of the day, so, it was awesome, um, ran the LEDs, it was running just fine, uh, it was great, and then later during the day, 
probably about halfway through the day, I had my uh, second failure of the day, which was my boiler. So my boiler, basically what happened was the flame, I accidentally, um, the power supply, so for my burner, it's a forced air power supply, or forced air burner. So what happens is there's this fan that blows the right um, air mixture in with the gas to get it to burn properly. And if the power supply turns off to that, there's not enough oxygen, so the flame doesn't burn just right on the burner there. It makes a big fireball of flame, and basically that came, I lifted up the burner, or up the steam engine to see why the burner wasn't working, and a big fireball came out, and um, it melted the pipe here, and steam went everywhere. Water, hot water, and steam were squirting out, and so... That was a little, it wasn't scary, but it squirted on my leg too, and I didn't get a burn or anything, so it was pretty cool. Because um, I only, I set my pressure relief out for about 15 PSI, because I didn't really want to have a safety issue at Maker Faire and have steam going everywhere and it just a big mess. So uh, I only put it up to 15 PSI at Maker Faire. But, um, so it, it wasn't too catastrophic, it just made a big mess of water and steam everywhere, and, uh, it wasn't very violent or anything. So then I just took, um, luckily I brought uh, JB Weld Epoxy Putty, and I took some of that, and I was like, I mean, this is, might work, because um, it'll be easier than replacing the tube, because I could have cut a little piece of the tube off here and used that to replace it, but that would be a lot of work, um, because these fittings are really hard to reuse. So I took the putty, made it, or mixed it up, and put it right on there, and because the steam engine was hot, heat makes epoxy cure so much faster. In literally five minutes, I came back to, I was like, okay, I guess I should let this sit for a while. And so I put it on there, let it sit for five minutes. I came back and it was rock solid already. And I was like, wow, just because the heat made it cure like instantly. It was amazing. So I got it running within like five minutes. It was it was great. Um, so that was a really quick and easy fix, and it didn't leak or anything. Um, I actually have to re-solder this valve on the um, fill-up valve. Be or, yeah, so this is this goes to the water pump um, because it's actually leaking a little bit there. I can see the solder joint looks kind of nasty there, but yeah, you can see it. It's kind of nasty there, but yeah, I need to fix that. There's just a little bit of uh, water boiling on there. Um, but the internal combustion engine worked pretty good too today. Um, actually, at my booth, I had all four engines running at the same exact time. So that actually might be like a world first that a steam engine and a Stirling engine and an internal combustion engine that are all homemade without a machine shop were all running at the exact same time on one table. So it was kind of kind of exciting to see all of those running. So, um, but yeah, the internal combustion engine work, was working pretty good. Um, Often, it doesn't, since I didn't, haven't really had much time to fiddle around with it yet, it doesn't really stay running very long. So, the most I've gotten to run at one time is maybe like two or three minutes. But, um, and it's just, I just have to really play around with these valves and everything to get the mixture just perfect in order for it to run for a long time. Um, so often it would take me ten, ten times to spin this to really, to get it before it'll start. And it's just kind of a pain sometimes, but for most of the most of the people that came to my booth and I demonstrated it to it, fired up at least for ten seconds or so, just to give them a good demo of demo of it running. But it was pretty cool. Uh, I think my booth did really good. I pretty much had a constant stream of people at my booth, so that's I didn't get out and look at anybody else's booths. Sadly, um, I wish I could have, but um, I was just having too much fun. I only left my booth for about an hour for lunch, or, well, very late lunch. Um, so, yeah, and I had a lot of fun at Maker Faire, so really enjoyed it. But, uh, yeah, and I have to unpack my workshop, and, uh, <laughs> which I'll have to do that another time. But the steam engine, it still works great. It, nothing was wearing out or anything. It was running great. I haven't replaced the O-ring on the piston at all, so that's great. Um, yesterday I replaced the pit, the, um, the O-ring on my internal combustion engine, but I, I, it's still, it's still got really good compression. Um, you can see it's got, still got a ton of compression, so I don't think the O-ring after today, it doesn't need to replace again. Um, now I did oil it almost every run, so, 
um, that really helps the piston life if you oil it. So I really need to figure out an auto oiling system for this so that it, so it just puts like a drip of oil in every every couple of uh, minutes or something just to keep it lubricated well because it dries the piston. That's what kills the pistons or the piston ring, the O-ring, is the just when it gets dry it just really wears it out quick. Um, but yeah, everything worked really good. I only had the steam engine, like, I would have the boiler heated up, and then I would just fire up the burner every um, time somebody wanted to see the steam engine. So, yeah, it worked really good. Because the boiler just takes too much maintenance to keep it full, full of water the whole time and everything. So I just fire it up when people want to look at it. Um, when there's a couple of people at my booth, I fire it up. But or anybody that shows interest in engines. Um... And then this Sterling engine, I haven't done anything to this Sterling engine. It worked all day long. Um, I didn't have the burner turned up very high, so I wasn't running the generator or anything. But um, this one was running the generator all day long. Well, except for the first, like, hour. But um, it was powering LEDs. This one just ran, and it, it was pretty cool to watch this one run. It's it's not even wearing out or anything. It It's, it's so reliable. I love this engine. Um, it just low maintenance, you just have to put a flame under it and give it a spin and it fires right up. No, it's not as powerful or anything, and it's certainly, um, it's certainly gone downhill since I've gotten it, or since, since I've run it so much. I mean, it, it doesn't run quite like it used to when I first made it, but I think that's because the displacer might be starting to fill up with oil and stuff, so I'll have to take that apart and do some maintenance on it sometime, because I want to keep this running this engine running as long as possible because it's a really cool one. Um, but yeah, I guess um, that's really about it. Um, but people really seem to like my booth. So I was really excited that um, I had such a good turnout and everybody really liked what I did at Maker Fair and everything just because this is my first Maker Fair ever and it was pretty exciting. Just, yeah, it was really exciting just uh, experiencing it and uh, I had a couple of like people approached me for um, coming and showing my engines at like the like mini maker fairs that they have and stuff like at libraries and schools and stuff so I might actually get to show some of my sterling engines to schools and stuff which would be really nice that would be really cool and also the um, president or no the the founder of make magazine stopped by my uh, booth and he took some pictures there and it was really cool I didn't actually know who he was though because I'm actually not subscribed to make magazine um, but, uh, one of the other guys from Hack Pittsburgh, he was like, do you know who that was? And I was like, no. And he was like, that's the guy who founded Make Magazine. And I was like, what? So that was really cool. And, um, but I mean, yeah, I, I didn't really recognize her or anything because I, I've gotten a couple of issues of Make Magazine, but I, I, I didn't know who he was, so, but it was pretty exciting. So just meeting people and, um. So, yeah, sadly I didn't really get to make any videos of anybody else's um, booths, but I did take a couple pictures while I was, like, walking back from getting lunch and stuff. But, yeah, I was just just really enjoyed um, explaining my engines and everything to people. I might, I'm losing my voice because I explained how a Sterling engine works at least, like, a couple hundred times, at least two to three hundred times I explained how a Sterling engine works. So my voice is kind of kind of worn out right now, and, uh, yeah, but it was fun explaining it, so I kind of progressed and got a lot better at explaining it throughout the day, but, um, it was, it was a lot of fun, so, um, yeah, that's, um, that's about it, guys. Thanks for watching, and keep experimenting.